Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing well. Today I wanted to make a hopefully short and kind of quick video just talking really quickly about the compatibility of the HK A5 Extended Castle Nut with standard mil-spec buffer tubes. So, um, what I have here is a Geissele, just mil-spec, completely normal buffer tube. Only thing different is it just has a fancy color to it, but there's no difference. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to be putting this onto the ADM4 lower and I wanted to point one thing out that uh, I noticed, hence the reason I'm doing this video. So if you look in here, if you're familiar with how to build an AR-15, which presumably you are if you're watching this video, but just as a quick rundown, right here we need to put in the detent pin to hold in the buffer. So uh, when we do that, of course, it's held in place by the buffer tube or the receiver extension if you want to get uh, really you know terminology correct and all that or the problem with this um, as you'll see in just a moment is that the HK extended castle nut does not have enough room to thread on um, this is not I keep saying HK this is HK style this is a clone US made clone of the actual HK castle nut uh, there's no it's a different material, but for this type of video, there is no difference. This is dimensionally identical to the HK one. So I've got this threaded on all the way, and actually how I'm going to start this off is just like you would actually install it. So putting on the end plate, and we'll just thread this right on. Now that I got it started, I'm going to go ahead and put in the pin and spring. Just holding that down. So right here you can see hitting right here so that's as far as I can go. So if I back it out a little bit just as you would normally do and then tighten this down of course you would actually torque it I'm not doing that for the sake of this video. And You can see my pin is right here. So I'm gonna take this out really quick so you can see it hopefully a little bit better. Actually, since this is silver, you'll see it better like this. So, there's the pin right there, no spring. Um, so just look for that silvery bit, and you can see the buffer tube is nowhere near. It has several more threads that need to that it needs to go in by before it would actually make contact with this. However, so now if I take this off here, so that's an example of. Uh, your experiences if you use a standard mil spec AR15 buffer tube. However, if you use something like what I have here, this is an Aero Precision, also mil spec. However, this is called their enhanced buffer tube, and, and this will work. Uh, one thing you'll want to keep in mind is if, if you do buy one of these, make sure it's the enhanced one. Aero Precision also makes a standard one that does not have this little notch down here and that's the essential part that's what you're going to want to make sure you have and um, there's other buffer tubes out there that'll work as well of course number one that will obviously work is an actual a5 buffer tube but uh, i use this just because well I'll, t I'll talk about it later let's just get on with it for now so threading on the castle nut again just all the way again and then here go here goes the end plate Okay, getting this started here. Now I've already done this off camera, so I'm not gonna show the full installation because uh, I noticed that this specific, this is a HK style pin, which is quite nice, uh, buffer retaining pin. Um, but uh, just to show really quick. So you can see here, I'm not even threaded in all the way and I'm already hitting the side of this pin. Now, as I mentioned, uh, this is a little bit hard to do, uh, especially on camera. Uh, a technique I found, or a little trick, not really a technique at all, uh, is to just hold this down with a flathead. It, it's hard to get your actual finger in there, but um, I'm going to go get a flathead off camera and hold it at a good angle that's not so awkward. And I'll be right back, and you'll see what I'm talking about. This fits perfectly fine. I'll get this totally assembled, make a quick cut, and we'll be right back. So here we are. I've got everything put together. You can see I have the buffer in here and everything. So I'm going to go ahead and just put it together just to show that this is functioning properly. I'll just do a 
very quick function check as much as possible, of course, don't have a trigger or anything in here. Here it is put together and I just threw an empty magazine in just to make it a little bit easier to lock back. So, you can see here, if I go ahead and do just that, it locks back. I'll drop the magazine now. If we slide this forward, it closes up. No issues here at all. So hopefully this was informative. Uh, I, I mostly wanted to make this video because I noticed there's a lot of conflicting information when I was looking this up. Uh, when I was first looking to do this build, which will eventually be a G95K build, uh, definitely wanted to have this type of extended castle nut on, which HK has had on since the A5. And from the posts I saw, just from initially looking up, everything said that it would work fine with a standard mil-spec buffer tube. And while this will thread on to a standard mil-spec buffer tube, you don't have enough room back here to make it work. It, the actual A5 buffer tubes do have extra threading, so that's why they work there. Uh, but as you saw, this one will also work. Um, this is something I found out about this specific buffer tube. Uh, for once, r Reddit, of all things, was actually helpful. Uh, I found a post when I was searching for uh, what's going on here. Uh, I actually post there. So um, This buffer tube, for sure, this is the Aero Precision. Uh, enhanced, specifically, buffer tube. Make sure it has that little hook here at the bottom, as I showed earlier. This one, for sure, will work. I was looking at a bunch of them. Um, there's a, bound to be a lot more out there that will work. Uh, it looks like, now I haven't actually tested it, so I can't say for sure, but it looks like the Strike Industries one will probably work as well. It also has kind of a little hook down here. Uh, and of course, if you get an actual HK one with the nice rollers and all that, that will work perfectly. But for those who did not want to go with that one for one reason or another, for me personally, I just kind of thought it was a bit ridiculous to spend almost $200, uh, or actually slightly more, because I wanted to go with the RAL coloration uh, on a buffer tube. It just seemed a bit extreme, especially when even other good buffer tubes are nowhere near that price. But I don't want to get too far into the weeds about any of that. Um, suffice to say, this does work, so that is cool. So depending on what you actually search, uh, that's the big reason why I wanted to make this video. You may not even find that post I was saying about. Depending on what your search query was, I found that sometimes it would only show results that said like, yeah, this will totally work on a mil-spec buffer tube, but it doesn't. You gotta make sure that you get specific types of buffer tubes or the HK1s themselves. Really quickly, I'm gonna go ahead and interrupt myself here. I realized I didn't talk about this earlier and I kinda wanna mention it because it's relevant to the video. Um, why use an extended castle nut? I'm sure there are questions why. I mean, it seems like it'd be kind of annoying if it causes so many compatibility issues. Uh, and there is a few good reasons. Uh, in my case, I'm mostly wanting it because I'm doing a not totally clone build, but a very, very heavily inspired by a G95K build. So that's the main reason I want it for mine, but uh, this is a kind of weak spot on the AR-15, and um, the stated reason on HK's website why they went with an extended castle nut is uh, for better drop uh, durability, um, which is a little vague. That is all they say on their website. Uh, I've seen people speculating from Larry Vickers saying that it's when it's dropped with the stock fully retracted. I've heard a few other people mention that as well. I've heard that it's when you're parachuting, being a cool guy, uh, and that way if you happen to land kind of badly, it doesn't destroy your buffer tube. Um, and I've just heard in general that the buffer tube's a little bit of a weak spot, and it is, on an AR-15, and this just helps to reinforce it a fair bit. So because of that compatibility issue, would I go out and change every single one of my AR-15 lowers to one of these? No. Uh, I don't think it's... I mean, there's no denying this is more durable, but... Uh, for the vast majority of use cases, it's not really something that's worth doing, especially something like this. It's a fairly hard part to replace. But, yeah, in case you were wondering, uh, I know I've made videos in the past where I just kind of show how to install stuff and I don't really talk about why, so I did want to just really quickly address that here. Let's get back with the rest of the video then. Thank you all for watching, especially if you got that far. Really appreciate it. Let me know if you have any other questions in the comments below. Uh, as for a little bit of a channel update and how this build's going to be going forward for the near future. This gun's going to be going away. Uh, I'm going to be sending it off to get refinished in the sand type of coloration, and it will hopefully not be gone too terribly long, but probably a few months. So when I get this back, that'll be exciting. I will do a video on it then, but until then, I'll have a few more videos out, and uh, hope to see you all then. So take care.